Hey guys, it's me, Callie. Today I'm going to show you how I created this adorable polymer clay snow dragon bottle for this month's Gypsy and Witch Challenge. I had a lot of fun creating him, and I hope you'll enjoy my tutorial. Stick around, check it out, and when you're done, don't forget to go check out my Gypsy sister, Miss Rita Marie, as well as the other folks at the Gypsy and Witch Facebook group. I'll put all links below. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to tell you what I used. Feel free to substitute with what you guys have. I used some Primo Sculpey Polymer Clay. I used a small spice bottle, and I actually wound up using a cork for my bottle. I have some 18 gauge wire. Something to craft on and bake on. You could either use a glass plate or a tile. I also have a dedicated pan that I use for polymer clay. I used a variety of tools for the clay including a ball tool, a needle tool. I made my own kind of scale making tool out of a pen casing that I just cut. A couple of paint brushes. some Perlex powders, black acrylic paint, some Sculpey Bacon Bond, some Deco Art Metallic Luster, Aileen's Clear Tacky Glue, Um, some different glitters, assorted bling, and some polymer clay glaze. Okay, so I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay guys, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is condition your clay. And I'm using some Primo by Sculpey. Uh, this one's Periwinkle. And I also had a smaller block of Primo, and this is kind of a sparkly white. So I took about half of that and about half of this block and mixed them together. Use the colors of your choice. You could always paint it afterward if you're not happy with it. You know, you can always change it. So, And basically, I just took those and mixed them together. You condition it. You mold it until it's soft. You can use a pasta machine if you'd like. So basically just get your clay nice and soft and ready to work with and set that aside. And then the next thing I chose to do is take my spice bottle and I'll take the cap off. I'm choosing to use some wire. Now you don't have to, you could just use the clay straight up on the bottle, but I'm choosing to use the wire for a little more stability. And I'm basically just going to, and this is 18-gauge uh, wire, I believe. I got it at the dollar store, so it's very cheap. It's very malleable. And we're going to form a head, which is just kind of like a triangle at the top here. And again, this is more for stability than anything else. You don't have to do this, all right? So I just have a little bit of a triangle shape, and then... I'm going to take my bottle or whatever you're using and I want his head to kind of stick out off of the bottle. If you don't want that, you could put it down to the bottle. But I'm just going to have him come around and I'll mold the wire just to get an idea. Uh, you can go all the way around as many times as you want, but I think I'm just going to kind of come up around like that. And then I have some wire cutters. So this is all I'm guesstimating here, okay? So you can use, uh, you know, tools if you want to kind of, you know, get an idea of how you want to do this, how he's going to lay. All right? And then I'm going to take it off the bottle, and we're going to actually just form the clay around the wire, all right? You're going to place it on and you can build it up 
and all the way down so it looks like a snake or a worm and I'm just going to press my clay into the wire until I'm happy with the frame that I've created and I've kind of done that ahead of time here with this guy and I'm not done with it but just to show you all right and then let's see something like this and then I'm going to continue putting clay all around see you can still see the wire underneath and I'm going to work with this and just play with it it's very forgiving and I'm going to build up the head and more of the body and all the way around okay so when I'm done doing that I'll come back and I'll show you how that looks see you in a minute okay guys so I'm just continuing to form this around the bottle um, I have no set plan here I'm just kind of going intuitively if you want you can look at pictures of dragons it almost looks like a seahorse kind of um, but I'm just kind of letting my fingers form and I wanted to show you with the head I've just kind of done this diamond shape here and I want to pull his ears a little bit I think um, and I'm also going to if this is the back of his neck and all the way down I'm gonna kind of pinch my clay here and I want to form a back ridge now some of this will be covered with the with his wings you know but I'm just gonna kinda get an idea of where his vertebrae might be and I'll be putting little further embellishments and texture on this you know but I'm just gonna kinda go all the way down form it around and I'm also going to I have this is a empty pen and I just cut the end a little bit and made this little tool you can use what you have but it's a great scale making tool so I'm also going to be laying in this texture here all the way through the skin alright you can add texture sheets if you want um, I'm gonna kinda here's his belly I'll probably do some lines across there I'm not going to show you every step of the way, you guys, because honestly, I'm I'm doing this as I'm showing you. I've never done one of these before, so I'm not an expert. Um, there are plenty of polymer clay dragon tutorials out there, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of what I'm going to be doing. And as far as his eye goes, I have these black beads, and let me just show you one. I'm going to, where's my little, take my ball tool here, alright, and again, I have some wire sticking out here, I'm not worried about it, I'll put, um, <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take one of these little black beads I have, whoa, and just put it in there. You could use little rhinestone gems, anything like that. Just make sure it's glass because we're going to be baking this. Okay? And then we'll just give them an eyelid by taking just roll out a little snake and go over your bead okay and you can do one on the bottom okay whatever you want however you want to do that and then for his nose I'm going to kinda I'm thinking of like bird horse kind of a face you know um, again take a look there's plenty of pictures on Pinterest so kind of something like that and then I just have a little 
tool and I'm going to lay in some nostrils. Okay. And again, with the texture, I'll be continuing to add texture all along. So these are my plans, guys. And this is, I'm telling you more than showing you because like I said, I'm winging it as I go. But let's do that. And I'm also going to um, add a couple, uh, you know, an arm and a leg here. And all I've done is just rolled out some of the clay and like maybe make a teardrop shape. Okay, and you can get this as fancy or as simple as you'd like. And I'm just going to, you know, cut some little claw feet. If you will. And texturize those up. And then I'll probably, for instance, you know, kind of be laying them down. So we'll do two in the bottom and then maybe one here. I don't know, might not even see that side one. So these are my plans. I'm going to do this all and I'll be back and we're going to do his wings. So that's where we're at. See you in a bit. Okay guys, I've been at this for a while now. I wanted to check in with an update. He's coming along. Um, here's the arm that I was telling you about. I decided to just do the side that will show. I only did one arm and one leg. And I did the ridges on the back. I'm not done detailing everything yet and texturizing. Almost like a, looks like a brontosaurus ridge, you know. The head I did, I'm still not happy with, but I could mess around with this for hours. Um, I gave him some little ears, like I said, I just pinched them, and I also added these little horns on the back. Um, I just took some clay and twisted it up like a unicorn horn and added it. Um, his nostrils I made a little bigger. I used the end of my little tool here and I just kind of pushed them in. And I kind of outlined a little bit of a mouth. The I put some the ridges over his eyebrows like I showed you. And then the top of his head here, I just rolled up little tiny balls of clay. And just kind of added them in a pattern on top just to give him more dimension on the head. So, like I said, I could play with this for hours. I'm, I'm pretty happy with him. Um, I patterned up the skin all the way down to the tail like I showed you and his belly I just took um, and went across lines like a almost like a snake belly you know so now it's time for the wings and there's another thing I'm gonna do now I'm going to have him hold a treasure and I'm not gonna be using this bottle I'm not gonna open it and close it for anything so I'm going to be happy with having him hold a treasure of marbles. And I'm actually going to just bake these. So I'm going to put these in now because I'm going to put the wings over the top of the jar. Like I said, you can choose to keep the lid free if you want. But I'm going to have it so he's holding his little treasure here. See? And it's okay. These are glass, so they'll be fine to bake. And that being said, I'm going to leave this top of the lid on here, and I'll be able to shape his wings over the top of it. Okay, on to the wings. All I did was take some of our wire again, and I approximated, I held this up, and I said, oh, how big do I want it? The wings are going to come out about here. And, you know, he's kind of a baby, so they're not going to be too big. So I just kind of eyeballed it, and I made two pieces of wire this big, and I put a little bend in it. And this bend is actually going to go right into our clay, and we're going to bake it this way. 
Okay, so I made two of these and then I took one and I just rolled out some of my clay and I laid this on and I just cut around it with an exacto knife how I wanted the wing to look you know it doesn't have to be perfect okay so something like that and then I've already done one of course here I just take it and form the clay around the wire leave the little bit out that we're going to stick into the body okay and like I said I've already done this but just form it around and then all I did was I took my little tool and I just drew some ridges down where his little fingers would be and kind of put some texture in there okay and all the way around and that'll be the inside of his wing and then same thing with the outside I'm just gonna texturize it a little bit um, different than his body and then we're going to actually just where do I want to do this right behind his shoulder place that in there okay now I am going to do two I think um, but let me play around with this a little bit but that's basically it now if you want you can use a little bacon bond uh, here to kind of you know help it adhere but position your wings the way you want them and then when that's done I'll see you back here and we're almost ready to bake see you in a minute okay guys here we are and here are the wings what do you think okay really happy I kind of tore up the edges a little bit on the bottom um, just to make them you know even though he's a new dragon he's seen some battles already uh, as you can see I've taken out the marbles I've changed my mind um, and I decided that I do want to be able to use the bottle and also I didn't really like the glass stopper as much so I got a cork and we'll, when it's done baking we'll be filling it up again and putting a cork in it and now the next step because again I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the way it, that it's turned out you know I could play with it for hours um, I pulled out some of my Perlex powders um, these are mica powders you can use eyeshadow um, I have pearl white uh, sky blue this is lavender or violet carbon black and gray lavender all right and I'm literally just going to take a brush I'll show you an example of what I'm going to do um, I'll take the white because this is supposed to be a snow dragon right and a little goes a long way you guys all right um, we'll seal this when it's done baking but for now I'm going to try to be careful of my wings but I just want to show you here I'm just going to paint some on and this really brings out the texture and the magic okay so I'm going to use a combination of those colors I just showed you and I'm going to go all the way around and glitter them up okay so I'll see you back here when that's done and then we're ready to put it in the oven Okay, now that I've gotten mica powder all over everything, I think I'm done. And I used all the colors I showed you before. These wings are really fragile, but once they bake and lay against the glass, especially this one, I think it'll be fine. Uh, I covered him with the carbon black just to bring out the detail. I used that light lilac and a little bit of purple under the wing. 
the white and the blue on his underbelly. And yeah, what do you think? I added a little heart kind of uh, shape on his tail here. Um, and we are ready to go into the oven. So I've preheated the oven to 275 Fahrenheit. And I have a little baking pan that I'm going to set this on just like that. And we're going to let it go for about a half an hour. So I will see you back here. Um, I'm actually going to put the wing up like that. And yeah, we're going to bake it for half an hour. And I'll see you back here when that's done. Okay, guys. He's nice and baked. And obviously you do that in a well-ventilated area, you know, in case you didn't already know that. But I'm super, super pleased with the way that he's come out. And the next thing that I'm going to do, and obviously let it cool down good when it comes out of the oven because it's super hot, but his wings stayed nice. And I'm really happy with it. And I just want to do a little more aging on it to bring out some more detail. So I've taken some of my Americana acrylic paint. This is in lamp black and I've watered it down. I just added some water to a palette dish and I have a brush here and I also have a wet rag or a damp rag and I'm just going to cover him completely and let it sit for a minute and then wipe off the paint and just leave the crevices so I know it looks a little scary as you do this but trust me and if you're worried about it you know you can go in right away so you'll see that yes in fact it's still okay I know the first time I ever did that I was like oh my god I'm gonna ruin it but you won't so be brave and I'm just gonna go around the whole thing these wings will look great. I'll show you one more and then I'm going to do the rest off camera. Very gently. Just. Okay. And you can see it stays in all the texture and really just makes it rich. So let me finish this up. I'm going to do the whole dragon, every nook and cranny and I'll see you back here when that's done. Okay, so the paint's nice and dry and I'm really loving him more and more every step of the way. What do you guys think? We're almost done, but I think there could be one more step and that's just a little like rub and buff. I'm gonna add some metallic luster um, I have some Deco Art Metallic Luster in Silver Spark, and I'm just going to, I'll take some on a Q-tip, and I'm just going to kind of touch around spots that I want to highlight, and we'll rub this on, and then kind of rub it in a little bit his horns just gives it a little extra pizzazz where the light might hit okay I'm just kind of going around with my q-tip I moistened it a little bit and like I said I'm just going to kind of highlight some areas and I have a cloth here where you can kind of rub and shine it up a little bit. I want to be real careful though. Okay, so I'm just going to go around. I'll do some like highlight his wings. Things like that. All around. Top of his ridge where the light might catch. All right. So I'm just going to kind of do this randomly all around and see you back here when that's done. 
and then I may add some bling to the outside of the um, bottle before we fill it up or after we fill it up but we'll see okay I'm just going to do a few more spots and see you back here with some glitter and marbles and maybe some bling okay guys we're almost done um, I apologize I didn't film the part where I put the glitter in but I put a mixture of this twinkle diamond dust and some generic blue glitter I had and I mixed it in with the marbles and I just think it kind of gives it a magical treasure kind of a look and I put the cork on and the only thing left that I'm going to do and it may be overkill but why not I have some little bit of bling here and these little teeny tiny Aurora Borealis crystals I'm going to take some of my Aileen's tacky glue and I'm just going to kind of randomly put a few on the outside of the bottle. So that's the last step that I'm going to do um, and they'll just kind of blend in around. So I'll come back when that's done and we'll be finished. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Alright, here you have it. The bottle's all decked out with crystals. I added a crystal to the top of his head as well. Gives him a lot of personality, I think. And I'm really in love with this, you guys. I hope you like it, too. Uh, I did add a coat of gloss glaze on top just to seal everything in. Um, I forgot to mention that, but yeah. And what do you think? If you've enjoyed this, please give me a thumbs up. If you try it, let me know. I would love to check it out. Don't forget to go check out my gypsy sister, Miss Rita Marie, as well as the other group members in our Gypsy and Witch Facebook group. Check it out. We'd love to see you over there. And have a beautiful day. Take care, guys. I'll insert some pics, and I'll see you next month.